Good afternoon, fellow Toastmasters and guests. Today I'm going to share with you my deepest secrets of investing. <laughs> what I do is called momentum investing. Before describing it in detail, we have to know what I mean by momentum. Who here has heard of Newton? And I don't mean the cookie. <laughs> Good, good. So HP does hire engineers. <laughs> so what is Newton's first idea? In fact, it wasn't just a good idea, it's the law. Newton's first law. Things in motion tend to stay in motion. Thank you. Yes. An object in motion tends to stay in motion. Well, that doesn't apply just to the physical universe. It applies to the financial universe as well. In other words, Assets that are going in one direction tend to keep going in that direction. That can be either going up or going down. Now what makes momentum scientific from an investing point of view is that researchers have gone back and they've determined what that past period should be in which you measure performance. They call that the look back or formation period. They've determined that one year works really well. But anything between 3 and 12 months can also work. So as an example, if the stock market has been strong over the preceding 12 months, that means it should continue to be strong over the next short period of time. If you have positive momentum, it can be of two sorts. One is absolute momentum, which I just described which is looking at an asset itself and its performance over the past. The other is called relative momentum, in which you compare the performance of one asset to another or to a group of assets. So if one asset has outperformed another over the preceding year, chances are it will continue to outperform over the next few months. That's relative momentum. Absolute momentum is the as asset with respect to itself. Here's an example that we can look at for the S&P 500 index. This is the S&P 500 uh, index right here. We can see it's not a very smooth uh, performance. And this, these are bonds, aggregate bond index, which is short-term bond index. So what happens when absolute momentum is positive, we stay in stocks. That's what the blue line is. When absolute momentum becomes negative, in other words, when stocks have been negative over the past year, we exit into short-term bonds. So what happens then? Yeah. We'll find out in a moment. <laughs> <laughs> the idea is that we can avoid a lot of the bear market activity that occurs when stocks are going down by getting out as soon as absolute momentum turns negative. That's what we have here. The stock market starts to weaken and continues going down, but we go into the safety of bonds and we stay there until the stock market picks up again and then we get right into with the stock market. We give up a little bit of, of uh, our profit because we can't get out right at the top. So we do give back a little bit, but then we go to the safety of bonds. When the stock market starts going up again, we jump back in. Now let's move on to the next slide uh, so that we can compare absolute momentum to relative momentum. This is using the All Country World Index. Half of that is the S&P 500, and half of that is the rest of the world, stock, stock market. So relative momentum is the green line. And in relative momentum, we're simply switching back and forth between the S&P 500 and the rest of the world, depending on which is strong. So we can see we have a nice enhancement to our return compared to where we end up with the All Country World Index. But it's not a very smooth <coughs> ride. When we look at absolute momentum, on the other hand, applied just to the All Country World Index, we see it's a much smoother ride. 
and in, all, in absolute momentum, we stay in the total world stock market as long as it has been up over the preceding 12 months. When it hasn't been up, we exit to the safety of bonds. So we see that both of these forms of momentum give us a nice enhancement to our return. But absolute momentum gives us a much smoother performance. If you had to choose between one or the other, which would you choose? Absolutely. 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 Well, relative did better overall, so I would go with relative. Would you? <laughs> okay. You haven't seen what these kind of equity erosions are. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the stock market can be down during bear market periods more than 50%. Would you really be comfortable seeing the value of your account drop by 50 or 60%, even to earn a little bit extra higher return? The maximum drawdown or equity retracement for absolute momentum is less than half of that. It's only on the order of 20%. Most people would give up a little bit of return in order to smooth out the volatility of their investment. Now, there's nothing saying that you have to be in one or the other. You can combine the two. And that's what we have in the next slide. We have the same all-country world index, the same absolute momentum, the same relative momentum, but we combine relative and absolute momentum together so that we choose between the rest of the world or U.S. stocks, depending on which is stronger, but we only invest in that when it shows positive absolute momentum, when it has been going up over the preceding 12 months. When it hasn't been going up, we retreat to the safety of bonds. So that is what I call dual momentum. You can see that it has a higher return than either absolute or relative momentum, and it preserved the stability of absolute momentum itself. I've written a book called Dual Momentum Investing, but you don't have to buy it because in six and a half minutes I've just described the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> However, if you want to learn more about the background and the details of how you can do it yourself, then my book is available.